Poker offers almost limitless options. You might think choosing between clicking one of two or three buttons isn't limitless options. But you can also choose a bet or race sizing. And combined with the choice of which hands to do that with, you're faced with an unlimited amount of possible ranges to play in any spot. And yet, most of the time, we're simply clicking buttons and play on autopilot. We call down top pair, we fold ace high to a shove. Wait, what? Did Viktor Malinowski just call this all in with ace queen high? Of course, this isn't solver approved. Uh, okay, let's start at the beginning. Victor opens ace queen suited and gets 3 bet by true teller in the straddle, who is 55 straddles deep. The autopilot thing to do is to know that ace queen suited is of course a call here and move on. But the better thing to do would be to think about what range we're actually facing here. So, of these 4 options, which do you think would be the GTO range the straddle should play in this spot? Pause the video and let me know in the comments. In a poll from a few days ago, 36% of you voted for option B, which is correct. Very nice. Option A, which is similar, would be the range the straddle would play if 100 straddles deep instead of 50. And we can see that this difference would lead them to 3 bet more suited hands because they have better playability with higher stack to pot ratios. And when shorter stack, they want to avoid 3 bet folding to a potential jam. In this scenario, offsuited high cards are 3 bit more often, which work better with smaller SPRs, because high card values become more important and suited broadways and ace highs can just be called and make sure to see a flop. The other two scenarios are spot without antis and straddles in play, and we can see that by the much tighter calling range. We would be getting a lot worse odds and can therefore not defend every suited hand and a lot of weak offsuited ones. Given that True Teller is one of the best players in the world, I think it's reasonable to assume that this range would also be the closest of these options to his real range. But, as proven by the poll, this might not be the case for everyone. So keeping in mind who you're playing against is another important part of not playing on autopilot. On the flop, we face a 1 3rd C bet which wouldn't actually be the most frequent sizing with these ranges, but is still a thing. With a gut shot, an overcard, a backdoor flush draw and great odds, we always have a clear call on the flop. On the turn though, we face a jam. Another chance of just taking the autopilot route and folding everything that isn't top pair. Which is what around half of you would do. And I certainly don't blame you. A quarter would need at least second pair or better to call here. Only 5% said they would call an ace high hand here. Which in reality might be even lower, because when you're in autopilot mode, you wouldn't even consider that option, let alone act on it. However, this is where your limitless options can come to play. You can just call off ace high. Just because it's not the go-to play when you're facing an overbet jam, it doesn't mean that you're not allowed to do it. So let's activate all of our brain energy when put in this spot and think this spot through from the ground up. First of all, pot odds are important. We have to pay 80k for a chance to win 150k, which means we would need around 35% equity with our hand to make it a profitable call. Next, we consider which hands we might be up against. According to the solver, you know what? Let's try it without the solver first, because that's what we would actually have to do in game. So what we want to ask ourselves is which hands could he be jamming that we're ahead of? Possible flush draws would be 4-5 of hearts, maybe 5-6, ace-4 and ace-5, ace-jack, and then maybe some other ace-x suited between ace-9 and ace-6, and combos like queen-9, queen-8 suited, and jack-9, jack-8 suited. But wait. Remember we discovered that the straddle wouldn't even 3-bet many suited hands to begin with? That means we have to take out most of these combos and could replace them with some offsuit ace-4 and ace-5s. And since we don't have the exact GTO preflop range in front of us in-game, let alone our opponent's actual range, 
we have to work with estimations regarding hands and frequencies. More hands you could see him jamming here would be Queen Jack off, so depending on the exact frequencies, we're looking at around 14 to 15 combos of bluff jams. But next, we need to know how many value hands we're facing. Now, since we're not on the river but on the turn, hands don't have a 0 or 100% equity. So being exact, we would have to count in both every bluffs as well as every value hands equity into the equation. But since in-game we only have seconds to take our decision and not hours, we need to simplify and go with a rough estimation. And with 35% equity needed, that would mean the value hand to bluff ratio would need to be about 2 to 1 to break even. If that ratio shifts towards value hands, we don't have a profitable call. And if it shifts towards bluffs, we do make money by calling. First on the list are aces and ace king that could go for a jam here. But for both, combos with the ace of hearts would have less of an incentive to do so, because they would block hands True Teller would like to shove against, as they would either fold a lot of equity or call with a worse hand. King Queen and King Jack off would be good candidates and maybe an occasional King 9 or King 8 off, even though those could probably be rare. Would two pair and sets just go for a jam here? Or choose a smaller sizing to give worse hands a better price? We don't know, but they would at least profit from preventing an ace, queen or a jack, maybe even of hearts on the river, slowing down the action. Queens, jacks and 10x are probably less likely, but might be going for some thin value slash protection gems sometimes. So we'll give them a few combos. Overall, those would amount to around 30 combos, give or take. Which means we are in fact within the range of a 2 to 1 value to bluff ratio. It appears that Victor estimated the bluffs to be on the higher side and or the value bets to be on the lower side of that. So he called. According to the solver, True Teller's jamming range would actually be quite narrow on the turn. It would consist of only a few rare ace-king combos, a few more king-x offsuit combos, even some 10x and then ace-4 and ace-5 off as bluffs. And against that range, Ace Queen of Clubs would actually be a call more than half of the time. However, this is based on the premise that True Teller would play a turn strategy where he splits his range into three different bet sizings. Whether this is actually the case, or he simplifies to just a jam or check with his whole range, would be another example of exploring truly limitless options in poker. Unfortunately, it won't fit this video anymore, so let me know if you're interested in it and I might put it into a future issue of my newsletter. In the end, making a decision based on conscious thinking instead of playing on autopilot should never be regretted. But one thing's for sure, if you're wrong, the backlash and roasting is also limitless. Watch this video next to see more of GG Poker's highest stakes or watch this video to see what makes one the Poker Goat.